We currently park in uh, Colorado uh, at 9,000 feet up here at a friend's house uh, between trees, so we don't have uh, full coverage uh, of the sun all day. But basically, uh, from 9 o'clock to late in the afternoon, we have the full sun up here. It has been more than a year since uh, we installed uh, the more than 4,000 watt of solar panels on the roof of the RV and the trailer. We have been running almost 100% of the power from uh, the sun. Since then, we only have ran the generator three times last year, actually, and none this year so far. Right now, it's uh, in the morning here, and uh, we're generating over 2,000 watt coming in from the sun, charging our batteries. We have a little Raspberry Pi, and you'll see some of the results from that device later, but it basically contacts the solar controls every 15 seconds and retrieves some data about the current status, uh, what's going on in there. Our Tesla battery bank has been almost uh, unchanged since. We added uh, a fifth module, so we now have over 20 kilowatt hours of uh, storage. And a very important part is we upgraded our balancing devices. These devices allow to be doing constant balancing. So if you look, for example, at this device here right now, there's only one of the cells that are being uh, balanced down. So it's showing the same voltage. This balancing happening automatically now, so you don't have to do anything manually. Uh, you just have these balancers running, and they're only running uh, when the batteries are close to fully charged. We upgrade the capacity of our reservoir for um, uh, the glycol that we use for the um, temperature control, but else everything is basically the same as it used to be, have an adjustable uh, control, so we can actually run the pump at different speeds if needed. Uh, right now it's running at kind of slow speed uh, because there's not so much need for it uh, here in the summer or in June uh, at this point up in Colorado. We added a Victron device also. Uh, it is pretty neat. It's a Bluetooth device that allows you to track uh, the state of charge from anywhere uh, in your RV actually. So you can see right now we are 92%. Uh, All the solar panels were installed in May last year and uh, we have been running uh, on um, that and the Tesla uh, modules uh, for our main storage. We do travel uh, for business, so we actually sometimes have to leave the motorhome in an RV park, and that is one of the main reasons that uh, we don't stay anywhere. Um, sometimes in the summer, if we have to be a place that is really hot, in July last year we were in Las Vegas, so we actually stayed in an RV park and needed um, external power for that. We can generate in the summertime around 30 kilowatt hours per day, but we can't really consume anything that is even close to that one. Uh, in the winter time, we had one of the shortest day of the year at uh, 11 kilowatt hours per day. And I was planning to have 10, so 11 on a sunny day in December with panels laying flat. That is kind of what it was designed for in here. There's a couple of columns also where you'll be able to see what it is in amp hours. And we have a 24 volt system, but to be able to compare against a 12 volt, you can see our uh, daily uses out there. So in the summertime, it's not uncommon. We run between six and 800 amp hours a day in average. Last week, this one is data for a whole week and you will see the top graph is actually the voltage on the battery. Tesla modules has a very nice discharge curve and basically it's almost linear with the state of charge. So since we normally don't go below 23 uh, volt, it's almost like we're staying at 75% state of charge. Some days we will use more power, like you can see in the middle there. We were using the AC actually for quite a while. So it was actually running after the sun went down. It kept on using quite a lot of power at that point. So we went further down. Tesla modules really don't have a problem going all the way down to, in our case, 3% state of charge. That is the 20 volt. That is the disconnect. Um, so there's a lot of leeway in here. And especially in the winter time, we use that for be able to handle one or two days uh, with very little sun actually. 
the last day of the week was completely overcast and you can see the curve is kind of jacked both with the solar output at the bottom but also with the voltage up in the front we still managed to do a few minutes uh, and even that day we did 10 kilowatt hours coming in from the sun and it was completely overcast except for a few minutes that day the June 1st was actually a day with full sun and we were running one of the roof ACs uh, most of the day in here. And you will see that um, we were capable of generating more than two and a half thousand watt up there. And even if the AC was coming on and off, it was actually still being able to maintain it all the way until uh, around five o'clock in the afternoon, actually. And then you can see the voltage started dropping and we shut off the AC uh, and it actually came up. That day was one of the highest consumptions ever we have done, 18.6 kilowatt hour. The day after, uh, we were off-roading all day, so we were actually not here. So you see there's really no usage during the day. The battery charges up, the curve with the different bends in them are because we are parked within trees. So when the solar panels get out of the shade, they will start producing something. And it charged out really fast. The battery is charged up before 11 o'clock, uh, even when we don't get any early day uh, charts out there. They stay charged all day long. And as you can see, we have around a 300 uh, watt uh, idle loads uh, being on network equipment and things like that. June 3rd was the day it was overcast and you'll see the solar output goes up and down, even if it was supposed to be almost flat in the middle. There was cloud all day long, so it ended up never really getting to the full point. But uh, right before the sun went away at six o'clock in the afternoon, uh, we still hit a uh, full charge and we still charge over 10 kilowatt hours uh, actually at this point. But we're very happy with the system. Uh, we have uh, ran the generator three times last year. Uh, once uh, was when Without watching the weather forecast, we used a lot of uh, power from the batteries for uh, electric fireplace we got, and it ended up driving it pretty low uh, in uh, November or something like that. So we ended up running the generator to recharge it because we had multiple days of overcast coming up. The other two times was in July, and to be able to drive to Las Vegas uh, in July, we had to keep the AC on in the RV while driving. And we could only do that if we actually ran the generator at the same time. So we drove to Vegas with the generator on, hooked up. Uh, then we drove away from Vegas again uh, using the generator again. But that is only three times. And our generator have actually been broken uh, the last couple of months. They don't do any output. Um, but we used to run maintenance runs on them just to turn a lot of loads on, uh, just to give them a few hours of load. 